you, Lord. Praise God. We are the healed, just like that song, because we serve the Lord that heals us, and he lives in us. So if he heals us, then we ought to be able to pass that healing on to others, because that's, that's what love is all about. So we welcome everybody. Good to see you. And, uh, you know, God is good all the time. It doesn't matter how long we've been around. We can always say that. Amen. Tonight, I'd like to start with the scripture in Revelation 14. Now, just to remind you of the context of Revelation 14, this is the one that starts out with the sons on Mount Zion with the lambs singing the song that only the 144,000 can sing, and then transitions down deeper in the chapter, and the three great messages of the end time are proclaimed. Fear God, Babylon has fallen, don't take the mark of the beast. And then, as a brother said at the, before the meeting, he was, he was sharing with us the scripture that had leaped out at him, that's kind of what this scripture did to me today. So that's why I wanted to talk about it. I'm going to read you verse 12 and 13. Verse 12, it says, Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, to John, Write! Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works will follow them. And then he, he beholds the reaping of the earth, the two reaping. But what he's talking about here, we're getting now toward toward the, the second part of tribulation, Jesus said it would be a time upon the earth that man had never seen anything like it if the days hadn't been shortened, that he did it just so that some elect be spared. And we know that there's, there's manifested sons of God, there's overcomers, and there's martyrs. And what he's saying here is those that are going to stand up against all this evil and then pass away, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Why? That they may rest from their labors, saith the Spirit, and their works do follow them. So let's look at that last part. They may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. Now, one of the things that's really strong in the book of Revelation, chapter 2 and Three, for example, are all about, I know your works. I will, he's going to reward you according to your works. And then as you come later into the book of Revelation, you see, for example, the white throne judgments where people will be judged out of the books. And several times in the book of Revelation, it talks about how your work, you'll be judged by your works. Now that doesn't tie in very well with what, Many are teaching now that's against the word. It's a, a type of grace that's a man-made grace. It's not the grace of the word of God. And the grace of the word of God produces good works. And God expects us to produce good works. That, that is what he's looking at us to do. And he says, their works do follow them. So for all of us, our works is what we're going to be rewarded by. Our works is what the, what at the end of time, we're going to have to, at the end of our time, we're going to have to answer for. So when it says the works that follow, let, let, let's think of a couple of things. Number one, people, if a, if a man, if you have a kingdom and a king has a son, well, that king's son is just plain the king's son. He doesn't have to earn that position. He was born into that position by virtue of his father. Now the same is true of us in the kingdom. When we are born again, born into the kingdom, born of the spirit, we didn't earn that. 
We were born of it because we believed. We had faith. It says if you have faith, you can be born again. If you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you can be saved. So we are born into that. But now that king's son doesn't, if he doesn't manifest the care, he can, even though he's always the king's son, he can grow to be more, and if the king is a good king, he could be more and more like his father. He can grow in fruit. He can grow in character. He can become more and more like God. And he can start doing the works in the kingdom. If, um, if, if, somebody, if somebody comes into this room, for example, and uh, there was a chair out of place, and, uh, and I said to that person, uh, would you mind putting the chair back? And they did it, you go, well, that was good. But now, if somebody who'd been coming here a while and kind of knew our ways came in and saw a chair out of place, they might just walk over to it, put it back in place, and never say a word or think about it. Why? Because they had the right mindset. They had the right in our example, the right character. So the king's son can go out and he can, he can help people. He can do what king's sons do. He can open up the treasury to the poor, whatever it might be. Or he can lead an army to advance the kingdom. All of these he can do, and yet none of that earns him more of being the king's son. If he's... If he's Son the first, 20 years from now, whether he's done nothing or he's done everything, he's still son the first. But if he's son the first that's done everything, well now, which one pleases the Lord more? Well, he's going to have lots of rewards. Why? Because of all the people he's helped. Because of all the advancement of his father's kingdom. Whereas the other, even though they're still the king's son, and might get to be buried next to the king. They still, they have nothing to follow them. It says their works do follow. There's nothing to follow. And in the Christian life, we are the children of God, but we, we need to manifest the character of our Father. We need to grow in the fruits of the Spirit to become more and more like Jesus. He said, we will be coming to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. He doesn't, he doesn't want us to stay babies our whole life. He wants us to manifest the stature of the fullness of Christ and all that comes with that. When you manifest the stature, that just means you're like Jesus. When Jesus was here, if he saw a sick person come to him, what did he do? He healed them. That would be manifesting the stature of Christ. If you see a sick person and... Ignore them, never think about it, never feel like you ought to pray for them or lay hands on the sick. Are you manifesting the nature of your father? Well, not according to God's word, you aren't. Now, when you do that, it doesn't make you more of a child of God. It makes you more of a manifest child of God because you're manifesting the character of your father. You're manifesting the image of Jesus. If you go sin, saying that you're a Christian, that's, that disgraces the kingdom, that disgraces the Father, and it doesn't matter what doctrine you weave in there to try to, try to uh, say, oh, it's okay to do. It isn't okay. Why? Because it's against the commandments of the kingdom. The commandment of the kingdom is holiness, grace that gives power to live a holy life, it's so simple because, you know, everybody says the same thing. It's all about Jesus. He is the center. Well, if he's the center, we should be like him. A servant's happy to be like his master. It's enough for him to be like his master. Jesus came to make us sons and daughters of God so that we could continue his mission, continue his kingdom, continue his life here in this earth, not to earn our salvation. That has no part in it. The just shall live by faith, period. That's it. You want to come into eternal life? It's got to be faith. 
You want to do works? You do works of faith. You do works because that's who you are. That's who you have within you. That's the desire you have. If you're the king's son, daughter, you're going to desire to do the works of the king. You're going to desire to promote his kingdom. Why? It's your kingdom too. You're joint heirs with the king. You're promoting your own kingdom in a way. Anybody would want to do that. When you, if, if, you're, if you're part of a family and it's a, you know, maybe a well-to-do family and they're big into helping other people and charities and things like that, you're going to want to do that because it's the kind of family you've been raised up in. And when you do that, it just manifests that you're a member of that family. It doesn't make you a member of the family. It manifests what family you're walking in. Now, you got to be careful because he says, I would that you be born again. Well, some, he also talks in the word about people that are twice dead. So you want to keep the life flowing. You don't want to walk on the edge all the time so you fall over. And in a way, it's not, you know, people, I fell into sin. No, you walked into sin. It says, don't let sin reign in your mortal bodies, that you should obey it in its lusts. You're the king. You're the priest. He's given you the fruits of the spirit, including self-control. You actually are the one that decides, well, am I going to reach out and do something wrong, or am I going to heal the sick? That's our decision. When you heal the sick, you manifest the Father. Now, so it says, and his works do follow. And so, what a wonderful thing, you know, those that, in Daniel, it talks about those that lead many to righteousness will be like the stars shining in heaven. If you decide that it's important, that just as somebody told you about the kingdom and the gospel to do the same thing, well, you'll start and shine like a star in heaven because all these other stars will be there because of you. And, and God is not uh, unjust. Uh, it says he's not going to forget your righteousness. There is a reward for all that. But even so, when you walk in the steps of Jesus, that's not even what you're looking at. That's the result of it, that you're blessed. But what you're looking at, the greatest reward is walking in the presence of Jesus. Like, like a really old song said, walking in the presence of Jesus, that's my reward. What did God tell Abram? He said, I am your shield and your exceeding great reward. It, it's, he, didn't, he didn't give him a work to do. He said, look, you walking with me, that's your exceeding great reward. That's your shield, because that's always been the shield, the presence of the Lord. Nothing can penetrate that. It's just you don't want to step outside of it, because there's stuff out there you don't want, and there's stuff in there you do want. So stay where the I do want stuff is. So he says you're, the works would follow, but he said something else at the, in that same scripture, the, that same part of the verse. Yea, saith the Spirit, they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. So he said, when they passed on, they would be resting from their labors. There is definitely a work to do. Jesus said that the field is white to harvest, but the workmen are few. What do workmen do? They labor. When you, if, if you're building a house, it takes work. If you're building an ark, it takes work. If you're building a family, it takes work. If you're building a business, it takes work. If you're building a Christian life, it takes work. It takes discipline. It takes consistency. And there's no mystery or magic to any of this. This isn't a, you know, you, you, you swallow a Christian pill and all of a sudden you're a total Christian. It's you're born again and now walk in life and let that life grow and become, bear fruit. Jesus said if you abide in the vine, what? You'll bear fruit. You can bear fruit a hundredfold. Somebody will. Because yeah. Jesus said it. And some will bear 30, 60. There, there's different levels. Now, does that mean if you bear 30-fold, you won't make it in? It's not at all what it said. It just said, 
they aren't bearing a hundredfold, so they won't have as great a reward when they come into the kingdom. There's, when he talks about our, our glorified bodies, he says, you know, the stars in heaven differ in glory. You know, there's a different glory. There's people that are very close to the Lord, have walked in the presence of Jesus. They'll do that through all eternity. Because when you live this earth, there's, again, it's not magic. You take, you take your works follow you and you take your labor with you. And to whatever extent you walk close to Jesus, you'll have that, you'll get to do the same thing in eternity. There'll be those that are very close There'll be those that are saved as if by fire. Far better to just make it over the line, though, than not make it at all. So, when it says our labors, they would rest from their labors. Think of what they've been through up to this point. At this point, terrible persecution in the world. At this point, Jesus said, you'd be hated of all nations for my name's sake. It says that there'd be armies that would surround Jerusalem. All these things he talks about in the great scriptures of the end time, like Matthew 24. So these folks have, have been persecuted. Maybe they've been martyred. I don't, you know, there's so many different things that could happen here. They've refused the mark of the beast. And, and he said, now they can, if they pass on at this point, they can rest from their labors because that Jesus said that the love of when iniquity abounds the love of many would grow cold it takes a work to hold yourself in faith it takes a work to hold yourself in the joy of the Lord it takes a work to maintain the love of God for people especially when iniquity abounds especially when people are doing the most ungodly awful things it's like, like they said of Lot, he vexed his righteous soul from day to day, but he kept, he, he hung on. And this is this type of people. They hung on and then they, they rested. And their works will follow them. But obviously, we know from the book of Revelation, there's also people that will be manifested as sons of God, they'll be overcomers, that will not be able to be touched by the evil of this world. In other words, there's a wide range in the body of Christ. And what you want to do is be like Jesus. There's a, no matter what the question is, there's the answer. There's the standard. There's the ensign. If I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto myself. Lift Jesus higher in every area of our lives. And labor. You know, um, Christianity is a rest because it says it is. Pray in tongues, you get a rest. But it's also a labor. It's a labor that starts, if, if you will accept the gospel plow, if you will accept the work of the Lord, it's a labor that'll, that you'll carry on throughout your whole life. Paul said that he, he, and I may paraphrase a couple of these scriptures, but he said he labored more than they all because of the grace that was inside of him. He wanted to keep pushing the bounds of the gospel, taking the word where nobody had heard it. And he did it in the face of, as we read about in the book of Acts, terrible persecution. And yet he kept going forward. They would stone him and leave him as for dead. And he'd want to get back up and go right back in there and keep preaching the gospel. That's a labor for the Lord. Preaching the gospel is a labor for the Lord. But it's not the only labor. Bearing fruit is a labor for the Lord. Amen. Giving God the glory is a labor. For, it says the joy of the Lord is your strength. We are kings. We are also priests. We have dominion. But we also worship God in spirit and in truth. And as we live the life before God, we worship him. And, and that praise goes up to God a sweet smelling savor all of this is a part of the labor the priest's labor was to keep the fire burning the priest's labor was to offer sacrifices before God the priest's labor was to to help the people and the things of God there's a labor in being a priest of course there's a huge labor in being a king your life isn't your own 
If, if a true king, everything he does is for his subjects. Everything he does is for the kingdom. And if we have that same heart in us, that's what we do. Everything we do is for love of God, for the kingdom, and for people. Because they're made in the image of God and they're so lost. And we labor. Now, many think that, well, if I'm not a full-time minister, you know, I don't really have a labor. But that's not true at all. You go out and you read throughout the word, number one, because of the fact that we are saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, believe the word, we're all full-time ministers. I don't care if you're, if you're pounding nails, putting on a roof, uh, making stuff in a machine shop, selling things, designing things, a housewife taking care of that, it doesn't matter. Whatever work there is at hand to do, do it heartily as unto the Lord, because you and me, we're full-time Christians. We've been full-time Christians since we touched him and he touched us, since he became the center of our lives. And we will continue that way. But the labor comes in when there's opposition. The labor comes in when you want to discipline yourself to grow more fruit. You know, and, and some of that is just, there's a labor and then there's a patience because you don't always bear the fruit of your labors right away. Look at a farmer, which is used many times as an example in the word. He plants the precious fruit of the earth, but then he has long patience Till the earth brings it. He's got to, he has to till the ground. He has to weed the ground. He has to water the ground. He has to look after his crop. He has to take care of pests that would try to attack it. That's, that's the labor of a farmer. Well, we're all growing a garden for the Lord. We are the garden of the Lord. So we're the, he's, you know, he's, he's our husbandman. We, all of these things are parables of what we are. So when we get in, and we read scriptures like it says, I wish above all things in the New Testament that you would prosper and be in health as your soul prospers. It could be a labor to walk in health. You sometimes, something is attacking you, you speak to it and you command it and you release the power of God against it until it clears out because then you know it has to. Not based on what you feel, not based on what you see, based on faith in God. The just will live by faith, not by feeling. Amen. The same is true when it talks about the works of our hands and prosperity. He said he would bless the works of your hands. He said, if we could go possess the kingdom. And so if you're laboring at something with your hands, expect it to be blessed. If it doesn't seem to be, you need to command it to be blessed and have as much faith in that as you do in healing. Have as much faith in that as you do that if you plant seeds in the ground, they will grow into something if you don't let the weeds in and little foxes in and, you know, keep out all the darkness and the junk because we will, we will reap in due season if we don't faint. But sometimes there's also a patience you planted, now what? You know, many people, they, they, for a season, they really work hard, they labor, they plant, whether it's the gospel, whether it's healing, or whether it's just in their business, or their home life. Whatever, they really work at it and they plant, but if they don't see a hundredfold increase right away, many get weary in well-doing didn't say if you get weary in well-doing, you'll reap. It says if you don't get weary in well-doing, you will reap. And the just shall live by faith. You've got to believe that when you've sown something, it's going to bring forth the fruit that God said it would, no matter what it looks like. Not because you see something, but because you see the Word of God and it says something. And the just shall live by faith. We believe what the Word says. And we're going to have to... I mean, we are coming on a time, it looks like here, where people are going to have to believe God. Because the normal things that they've been able to get by with sustaining them, meeting their needs, having enough money in the bank, 
there are forces right now that are trying to put a damper on all of that. Now, at the, what is a Christian going to do? Are they going to, well, I'll tell you what, is, what happens typically, what has happened in times gone by, ministries have typically suffered. Why? Because they don't, people use their expendable income to give. And then ministries shut down many times when seasons like this arise. They don't have to. What did Paul do? I mean, he is, he is uh, if you want to look at a guy who went out there with the zeal of the Lord, a determination, who labored more abundantly than all, what happened? He said, I know how to be a base and abound. What happened when, when the church didn't give him enough? Well, he went to make tents. He knew he could do that. So now he had two jobs. He preached the gospel and he made tents. The tents made it so he could keep preaching the gospel. And there is no shame in that. People look at that type of thing and they think, wow, you know, you, you, you got to go to work every day? What's with that? Well, what's with that is God is using that as a testimony, as a way to reach other people. You know, wherever we go, we can reach other people. I was, um, I called on some, on a, a florist this week. And while I was there, I found out She's a spirit-filled Christian. We prayed for her for the Holy Ghost. I mean, you can't let, that's our real work. And sometimes, here's where faith in God comes in. You gotta believe that if when those situations arise, you, you stop and promote the kingdom and you let God's spirit flow, that that seed is just as important as making 10 calls that day. And you're gonna reap if you faint not. Everything counts. But of course, since we're full-time Christians, always, there's always on our mind that feeling, that thought of, oh, is there going to be an opening here? Can I talk to somebody about the Lord? Can I pray for somebody? Is there something I can do here? And while you're doing all of this, you got to believe it's going to bring forth fruit. You got to believe God's going to make a way, not because of what you see in your bank account, not because of what you see in circumstances. I mean, the world right now is filling itself with such an evil report and they're getting the minds of people twisted to believe they're going to go through really hard financial times, shortages, food rationing, all of these things. Jesus said the same thing, but he went on to say that a, not a hair of your head is going to perish. As we talked about earlier before the meeting, he read the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He prepareth a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. And there's a labor. We, when, we're, when we're working, we need to work. We need to work, but we work in faith expecting to be blessed. I guarantee as Noah was building that ark, he, he hadn't, I mean, nobody had seen rain. But I can tell you one thing, Noah was very confident that whatever came, because he was doing what it, the Lord told him to do, it was going to be all right. That thing wasn't going to have holes in it, and they had to, what do they call that, bilge water, throw water overboard. It was going to rise up and save him, because that's what God sent him to do that work in that time. So the same is for us. It's uh, like it says in Esther, what if we come to the kingdom for this time? What if we've been preparing, knowing what is coming in the end time? Because right now, you know, there's a lot of teaching in, in the world right now. I mean, now let's go over the positive teaching, not all the, there's also, as we all know, plenty of bad doctrine and it's hurting people. But you know what? There are also a lot of, a lot more is being spread, at least than I ever remember of, you know, God heals, you can have dominion, you can walk in the spirit on the more positive end. But you know what? One of the things we still haven't seen spread like we know it will someday. And hopefully as we hasten the coming of the Lord, it won't be a long time off, is, is, the, is the last revelation. You know, people, they... Many read the Old Testament and they understand the revelation of Moses and the tabernacle.
and they read the Gospels and they understand the revelation of God and Jesus. And Paul comes along and there's the Pauline revelation, which was a revelation of things that had nobody knew yet. Christ in us, the hope of glory. He, he had that revelation. But that wasn't, that wasn't the last revelation in the Bible. It was all, John was the one who summered it up. And his revelation was, sons of God, overcomers. You can, Jesus is coming again and there will be a people ready for him. See, and it's all the revelation of the word. It's all the revelation of Jesus. Revelation starts that way. The revelation of Jesus Christ. Paul said, this is going to be according to my gospel. He had a revelation of Jesus. John capped the revelation of Jesus with the book of Revelation. And when that was done, now everything would fit together. If you read it through the Spirit, it takes the Word and the Spirit. They that worship God must worship Him in spirit and truth. This is life eternal. You might know thee, the only true God, in Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Jesus said, but you don't understand the Word. And that's why, that's why you live in such error. You've got to understand the Word, but you understand the Word by the Spirit. It takes both. It isn't, it isn't the the dusty, dry, just words. I mean, we know people, or I've, I've heard of people in a way that, that can quote the whole Bible, and yet there's no power in their life. They're just, they're lifted up because people think they have all this knowledge of the Bible. Jesus said, eternal life is to know thee, the only true God. The real knowledge of God is experiential knowledge. It's when it changes everything about you. Salvation isn't mental ascent. Salvation isn't a gradual change. Salvation is you got translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light, and you're not the same person anymore. And uh, boy, I tell you what, that's such a great day. I don't know about you guys, but... I can, th I can st I think back on that day, which I do many times, and I still feel a tingle because it was, I met Jesus Christ. I, I, ch I became a child of the King. My sins were forgiven. It was a great day of release. However, I didn't stop there because you want to keep releasing and you want to keep growing in the knowledge of Him. I wanted... What it said in the Word, and I do to this day. I want to bear fruit a hundredfold. And I want to do works pleasing to the Lord, the works of faith and love. We do the works of love, we do the works of faith. We see the miracles, but we also see the brokenhearted healed. It takes it all. And that's what God says in His Word He's bringing us to. So He said they may rest from their labors. They're Look at Paul. He finally had come to the end of his race. I have fought a good fight. I've run the race. And it's like, okay, I've done everything. And Paul was, he was at rest. He knew he was going to his reward. Well, there is a labor for all of us. And there will be, there will be people that will continue laboring even after these in, in, this, in Revelation 14, even after they have died and gone on. There's still going to be people that will be alive and remain under the coming of the Lord. But that means they keep laboring throughout the rest of whatever time is left in the tribulation period. And we labor, whether we labor because it's a job, and we, and by the way, when you earn something for the Lord, it's, it's the Lord's. You know, people, especially a few years ago, people got, were, we're so hung up on tithing, and people would come to you and they'd say, well, should we tithe in the New Testament? No. It's far more than the New Testament. In the Old Testament, it wasn't just 10%, by the way. When you added in all the things that they were required to offer to the Lord over the year, it was a pretty good chunk of their income. But now, it's 100%. Well, I'm not my own. Why would my finances be my own? I'm not my own. Why would anything I possess be my own? So it's, if it's 100% the Lord's, then, and he wants you to, 
use 100% of it to help someone, what are you going to do? Is it, is it yours or his? Well, it's his and you're the steward. You're the administrator. You're the son or daughter who has, has your hand upon those finances. So at the end of the day, it'll be whatever you choose, which where will you turn the lever? You know, oh man, 100%, I might give them 25, that'll be good. And then you feel guilty, maybe 50. But you see, those are the kind of things that go through people's mind because that's the world we live in. If the, we came out of selfishness. All we like sheep had gone astray, we turned everyone to his own way. And Satan, he rose up in pride to exalt his throne above the stars of God. His throne. Again, the same thing. He wanted the preeminence. Selfish. It's all about me. That's what we came out of. And sometimes it takes some renewing of the mind before people totally get that they're not their own anymore. But as you do, then you just let go and let God, as they say in the old days, let go and let God, let God have his way and trust him. Now, does that mean you do anything foolish? Well, it might seem foolish to somebody. The, the, the wisdom of God is foolishness to man. And it might even seem foolish to other Christians at some point. You got to make that decision. Is that what the Word of God says to you? Turn on the spigot, give it your whole heart. And if God ever, just so I can be clear on, for the record that this is going out, if God ever asked you to give everything that you had, you would be blessed, not harmed. It says, the blessing of the Lord maketh rich, and he adds no sorrow with it. God is not going to penalize you for doing what he asked you to do. Amen. Now, other people might, the devil might, but we don't serve the devil and we don't serve other people. We are his. And he, my beloved is mine. I am his. His banner over me is love. So let's labor till we rest from our labors. And let's build up the works of faith and love so that they'll follow behind us and we'll have a good foundation when we, we enter into the next life. Because that's what, that's God's heart. I want matured sons and daughters, manifested sons and daughters, that are walking in the fullness of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the spirit. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for the revelation of Jesus Christ. And we thank you, Lord, you're the way maker for us and for others. And we pray for those, Lord, that are, that are right now in, in life and death situations. We pray, Lord, have mercy upon them. You are the way maker. Make a way, send a way. Help them, Lord, because that's what you do. And we command it in Jesus' name as your sons and daughters. Thank you, Lord.